back like we never left BDA and the chapter encompassed a lot. A lot of stuff happened in this chapter, so let's get right to it. First, we start off on the Straw Hat ship, and Luffy and those guys, they find out, and they react to Blackbeard attacking the um, Baltigo, right? So, now they know that Blackbeard attacked Baltigo, and from what this chapter told us, apparently Blackbeard engaged with CP0. So, it said that Blackbeard destroyed Baltigo, had a brief scuffle with CP0, then he retreated. More than likely, what I think happened is Dragon set this up, then Dragon anonymously, he contacted CP0. He tipped off the world government to let him know where Baltigo was. Blackbeard and those guys were there. And then he just slipped through the back door. He just set them up for, for them to basically go at each other while he goes through the back door. I do think Dragon is going towards the Reverie. He, he's going to pop up there. He's going to do some world changing things. That is the best time to attack when all the leaders are in one place or to have an epic speech or an epic entrance. That is when you do it. Luffy's reaction to his dad was kind of weird but it's so Luffy where he says well the guy doesn't even look like me I've never really seen him before and everyone's like yo Garp told you this how many years ago that this is your dad and Luffy's like well he doesn't really look like me more importantly I'm worried about Sabo also they have Luffy cooking which is weird I'm like why is Luffy cooking out of everybody you have Luffy cooking he sets the ship on fire of course what else did you expect like <laughs> Luffy can can barely do anything without messing things up and you have him cooking playing with fire and it's funny because Carrot Mr took like a storm came out of nowhere and carrot mistook lightning for electro like pedro did state that sabo and dragon should be okay because if any of those guys has gotten killed or hurt or wounded captured it would be big news so there's no way that anything is wrong with those guys no nobody got hurt it was all a setup dragon set this up he knew burgess was there and he just set it all up so that they can go against each other we had to zone now and wanda's worried about carrot and bariete he tells her that well carrot is going with the straw hats <laughs> and you see bariete he has two bananas behind him wanda's like oh she bribed you that's why he didn't tell me huh he's like well well, you know, I wasn't trying to hide it from you, but I had to give my bananas, you know what I mean? Wanda does say she'd rather know now as opposed to later because she was worried about Carrot. Inarashi then goes into the Vivri card and says that how could they find Zunisha without a Vivri card? It has to be the use of a Vivri card. And then we flash to my boy Jack. And Jack, you can pretty much say he's a fish man or a half fish man because he has the teeth and he's alive at the bottom of the sea. So more than likely he's a fish man, he can breathe, but he, he is a devil fruit user so he has no, he can't swim. He's a hammer at the bottom of the sea so he can't do anything. That could be what happened versus the Admirals. They knocked him out, knocked him, knocked him into the water, no, he knew he was a devil fruit user and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, he must be dead. And then Jack comes out of nowhere, they save him because of course, he's a fish man. Now, a lot of people are still hating on Jack saying that he's weak, whatever, whatever. Jack is a monster. He did fail getting Doflamingo and all those things, but he can't dispute like the things that he was able to accomplish. I mean, he held off a whole country. He did attack admirals and he, he, he got wrecked by an island, but give Jack credit where credit is due, all right? Another interesting part of the chapter is Kaido. We get Kaido and we see Kaido in a different light. Before, remember 795, he was so intimidating. He thought like nobody could reason with him. He doesn't even really have... He doesn't even use a lot of words. He's like grunt and just action. In this chapter, Kaido is pretty much like, he's he's drunk. He's like this drunk, emotional wreck. He's crying, he's drinking, he's talking about um, uh, Jack and he's talking about fruit and talking about his ambitions as far as having a, a, a smile or zone only army. And it was like, yo, at first I was confused. Like, yo, is this really Kaido? Because I could not tell so Kaido is that type of guy where it's just like I think he has a lot of different personalities based on what's going on or it could be something else to trigger him so Shanks probably knows this and he could have been playing on this and that's how he's able to convince Kaido to turn around from attacking Whitebeard. I believe that's what happened because Shanks did not engage with this guy. We saw his power in this chapter where he casually just destroyed two of his subordinates just, just casually. They were saying to him that yo we, we have to be mindful of Straw Hat Luffy. At this point he keeps defeating people. He's defeated and it, Kaido even says all they've done is defeated a few Shichibukai. You know he, they haven't done much at all. They, they think they're hot shots, but now I know who they are. I think Sean Holmes mentioned this in um, Zoro Fanboy's live stream. He said that that's interesting that Kaido says that because a lot of people kind of think about Mihawk on the Yonko's level, and if he's just kind of just 
throwing the Shichibukai out the window, like, okay, they're just Shichibukai. Does that mean that he thinks, you know, he doesn't think that highly of Mihawk as well? So that's something else to think about there. Like, me, I, I mean, I do think Mihawk is on Yonko level. I do think Kaido would win if he went against Mihawk, but I do think Mihawk is definitely up there. Another hype part, when Kaido was saying this, she said they can go, they can continue saying that. They can continue saying that because we go right to Captain Eustace Kid and my boy Kid. Kid looks like his mouth is busted. He looks just down, defeated, and more than likely, Kaido drops a poo switches. Hawkins disappears. Kid is like, I am not serving you. And then Kaido just, you know, they go at it. I don't think it was a one shot. I'm sure he put up some somewhat of a fight, but I do think, it, you know, eventually, I'm sure a poo chipped in some where and yeah, Pooh, Kaido, it's just, I, I do think his crew got away, him, Killer, and Heat, and I will make a theory about what happened to them and where they're going and what's, how, the, how it played out. I'm gonna kind of try to fit it all together, piece it all together, per se, as far as what happened then. Crazy stuff, because Kaido's just saying, I took one of your big shots from your worst generation, and he's in my cage right now, so talk all that, the stuff you want to talk right now, because this this is going to be you in a, in, a, in a few years, months, weeks. Kaido even says the same thing that Jack says, just who the hell do you think I am? This man is a savage, he's a beast, he's a monster, 100 beast Kaido. Don't sleep, yo. So remember I said before that the Straw Hats let Luffy cook? Luffy used all the goddamn supplies because he kept messing stuff up. So now they're stranded on the sea with no supplies, nothing to eat. And it's like, yo, why would... I'm just keep saying, why would you let Luffy cook in the first place? It was really funny because he had the chef's hat. He was prepared to cook, but he, Luffy can't cook for shit. We flash to a few days later and we get Big Mom's ship and we see Tamago and my boy Sanji. And they're having interesting conversations because Tamago's saying, Yo, Big Mom's in a good mood. You should just join our crew. Just join our crew right now. She knows about your cooking. And she, you know, if you can live up to her, her expectations, she can make you join the crew. She can, you know, she it'll be a pleasant life for you under Big Mom. Sanji's like, yo, you tripping? I only cook for my friends. So I'm not cooking for any of you guys. I'm just here to talk. They mention his dad. And Tamago said you should come under Big Mom's crew and German 66. So I don't think I don't think German 66 is under Big Mom. I think they're in an alliance. It's kind of like a temporary alliance it will, be, it will be permanent after they get married so we, we see some Sanji stuff which was absolutely amazing I, I was like yo I was so hyped to see Sanji then the last part of the chapter of course Tamago shows Sanji his bride and his bride is actually Puddin and we know it's Puddin but Puddin is the three-eyed girl um so it, that, that's awesome that's awesome she, she's, she's gorgeous and Sanji his, his eyes popped out of his head because he's like oh shit like now I got it I got a decision to make. Do I want to go back to the crew or do I want to don't want to deal with this? Amazing chapter. No chapter next week, golden week. So we have a lot of stuff to go off of. Oda gave us a lot of stuff to make theories, discussions, just a lot of speculation based on what we know now. And as far as Kaido and his fruit, a shout out to Rogers Base. He had the video about Kaido being an Oni, and that's becoming more and more likely. So that should be hype. I, you really don't know where your order is going to go this next episode. We got um, pretty much every other Yonko. Maybe next chapter we get all Shanks. Literally, Blackbeard against CP0, Big Mom and her stuff with Sanji, Kaido and his stuff with Eustace Kid. No Shanks. No Shanks. Shanks has been a mysterious, just like, like he doesn't exist. And it's, it's crazy. But let me know what you thought about this episode. I thought, uh, not episode, let me know what you thought about this chapter. I thought it was pretty hype, really hype. That's One Piece pretty much every week so far. But let me know what you think. Like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel if you have not. That would be dope. Have a good day, people.